My name is Raptorbean, welcome back to Slay the Spire in the beta patches. Good lord, look at all that content. Content adding event we mean to gain. Uh, there's a couple bug fixes here, any of these particularly important? No, that's fine. Okay, and then gameplay changes. The anger card was buffed from 5 to 6 on its base level and 7 to 8 on its upgraded. Berserk was buffed across 0 across the board and upgrading it removes the vulnerability or rather reduces the vulnerability from 3 to 2 turns. Uh, the Eternal Feather has now been buffed. That's the boss relic that heals you for 2 HP per 5 cards every single time you enter a rest site. Uh, it's now 3 HP, so it's 50% more viable. I still think for me in particular it'll be um, uh, garbage, but still. Expertise Plus was nerfed to be uh, 7 total cards in hand. It draws you up to rather than 8. Yeah, it was pretty strong before, I understand. Uh, the Glacier card has been nerfed. Only its block has been reduced from 9 to 8, and then the upgraded version from 12 to 11. The thing is, you'd very rarely upgrade it, because upgrading it just gets 3 more block. And you don't really care about the block that Glacier... Well, you do care some about the block that Glacier gives you, but you don't care too much about it. You care about getting the Frost Orbs. That's why you've got Glacier in the deck. Good card, that Glacier. Hyper Beam has been buffed. I don't think this one was entirely needed, but it's nice. It's uh, 25 to 26 damage on the upgrade and 32 to 34 on the upgrade. I guess that's to balance off the opportunity cost that you get when you, you know, effectively exclude all orbs except for Plasma from being capable of being used in your build by playing Hyper Beam. Uh, the Juggernaut card, which I've recently described as uh, extremely slow and the worst way to deal damage in a defensive deck, is buffed from 3 damage to 5 damage on its base level, and its upgraded level is from 5 to 6. I, I had a small discussion with some of y'all in my Discord about this. My opinion still stands that I don't think it will be valuable in a defensive deck for the Ironclad, especially while the Ironclad already has access to Barricade and Trench and Body Slam. I think if it was five at both levels and upgraded to cost one, I could see a place for it. But the fact that it costs two in a deck that needs to play a lot of expensive cards in the barricade, in the entrench, in the flame barrier, and those kinds of big defensive cards, I still don't think it really has a place. I'm more than happy to try it out, though. Uh, the Malaise card has been changed to rare rather than uncommon. <laughs> Reasonable change, especially considering Chemical X is now in the game. Uh, the more bank relic has been buffed from 10 to 12 gold per level, and then it breaks when you spend any money in a shop. The offering card has been nerfed. The self-damage has been increased. This is on both levels. From 4 to 5, that's needed. Offering was pretty much an insta-pick in any deck that didn't have Normality or Velvet Choker. The Poison Stab's damage has been increased from 5 to 6, and the upgrade is 6 to 8. No change to the Poison. Nice try, Mega Crypt, but I'm still not going to play Poison Stab. Rampage's Card Ramp has been increased from 4 to 5 on its base level, and its upgraded version is still 8. That's going to make it more viable before you get your first upgrade. So an early pick of Rampage is a lot more viable for taking out your first few elites now. Rebound has been buffed at 1 damage on each level from 8 to 9 and 11 to 12. The Ritual Dagger has been buffed. Its base damage is now plus 3. I think its base damage previously was 9? Yeah, I think it was 9, so now it would be 12. That's just going to help. I, I, I mentioned this in the Discord as well. That's just going to make it easier for defensive decks to get it off the ground because aggressive decks had no problem activating Ritual Dagger and getting it to ramp over time. Uh, the Stone Calendar has also been... Oh, wait, hang on one second. Snack Oil has been buffed to draw three cards rather than two. It still confuses you, so it's like a Swift Potion in a Confusion deck. Otherwise, it's usually not good. I don't know. I, I, I still don't see the place of Snack Oil. Stone Calendar has been buffed from 13 turns to activation until uh, to seven turns until activation. That means it'll trigger in most boss fights, at least once, and in most floor fights, unless you're a particularly defensive deck, it won't trigger. I, I still don't know. Even with basically half the amount of turns to activate, I still don't know whether Stone Calendar will be good. I'll, I'll be happy to play with it. 
this is one of the ones that I think is the most important uh, gameplay change in this entire list. Tactician card is now uncommon. Tactician was a unplayable, if you discard this card, gain an energy. Upgrade, if you discard this card, gain two energy. Card for the silent uh, skill. It's extremely important when you look at Tactician being uncommon to remember that Acrobatics is draw four, upgraded, Acrobatics is draw four, discard one, and it's common. And it is one of the best silent kind of like heavy draw cycle cards. When you consider the fact that Acrobatics also exists and is common, Tactician becomes a very, very powerful pick. I think single-handedly, Tactician going from rare to uncommon and Malaise going from uncommon to rare is going to make the Silent Discard build so much stronger than it's ever been before. This is not even to include the fact that there's now the Hovering Kite in the game, which is an energy relic that allows you to discard two cards at the start of each turn, or rather forces you to. It's a quote-unquote downside, unless, of course, you have your Reflex or Tactician, and you're more likely to have Tactician nowadays. Tiny House Relic has gotten a buff. It gives you 20 more gold now. Unload card has also been buffed. This is, again, a little bit of a buff to the discard synergies because Unload is a rare card, an attack for one energy that makes you discard all things in your hand that aren't our attacks. Um, this, uh, the damage is two up at each level from 12 to 14 and 16 to 18. The Violence card now exhausts while played. This is one of the colorless cards that we haven't seen yet that was introduced in the last patch. Wrist Blade Relic Nerf. It goes down from four additional damage on every zero cost attack to three additional damage. And its effect now occurs on cards which temporarily cost zero. Seven minutes into the episode and we're about to get into our first run. Sure. I'm going to go for the Silent because the Silent still has a boss relic that I haven't seen yet in the Wrist Blade. So I'm also going to try and turn this into a Shiv build if I have any capability of forcing such a thing to occur. Okay, it looks like my maximum is actually two elites on this floor. Yeah, it is. Oh well. I'm actually going to take the 50% to remove two cards because the Silent starts with far too many cards in their deck. They start with 12, whereas every other character starts with... Fjord. That's not the card I was trying to play there, by the way. Just in case you were wondering, thankfully I'm not going to pay for it. Every other character starts with 10. When I said Fjord, I was saying Fjord is in the smaller amount, not as in four. The number. If there was a character that started with four, I would be extraordinarily about that life. Um, as much as I want to get the discard synergy started, do I want to take a dagger throw over my first dagger spray? Dagger spray is real big. I want to take the dagger throw. Let's be optimistic, especially considering we have a shop in not too many spaces. Since we now have two ways to discard a card in our hand, I think I'll actually take the regret. Oh my god! Tough bandages. Whenever you discard a card during your turn, gain three block. It's a discard synergy! Congratulations, it's a discard synergy. Wait, did I already have full defense there for some reason? No. Uh, there we go. Hell, we might even actually carry some curses in this deck. That's not something I usually do. Backflip, dagger spray, dash. I'll take my first dagger spray now. Definitely going to be taking the money here. I almost never leave the money. That's unfortunate to see Duvu doll this early, especially considering I was kind of going for it. Uh, there's also Nunchaku, which is uh, the new rare relic. Every time you play 10 attacks, gain an energy. That would be really, really good for, for, for rather, a shiv deck. I think here I'm going to take All Out Attack and a card removal. All Out Attack is some more AoE, and another card removal is going to allow me to get the curse out of my deck. I mean, now that we've seen the Duvu Doll and we're moving past it, the idea of keeping a bunch of... Uh, I'm actually going to use a Strength Potion here. The idea of keeping a bunch of... Da, 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 can't even think. The idea of keeping a bunch of 
curses in our deck is not as well incentivized anymore. One down. Two down. Oh, yep. This kind of fight is exactly why we took the extra AoE early. Juzu Bracelet. Regular enemy combats are no longer encountered in question mark rooms. Second dagger throw, sure. Upgrades to defend and the strike. Great. Now, this is one of the big reasons I was fine with taking the 50% max HP damage at the very start. Because we've got a rest here. Shop. Rest. And another rest over there. So we have so many rests. Um, it's best to wait into, until after this space to rest. Because I might get, you know, Regal Pillow or something like that. So instead here I'm going to choose to Smith. And I need to smith both of our AoE cards because AoE is super important. Dark Stone Periat, whenever you obtain a curse, increase your max HP by 6. Well, damn. Here I'm going to rest. Who's our final boss? Oh, crumbs. Probably got to rest before that as well. Uh-huh. All right, Laos. Bye. Ghost in a jar, another dagger throw. We need some things that benefit from being discarded. With three dagger throws in the deck, as soon as we get anything that benefits from being discarded, we will get a really huge benefit consistently. Yeah, this is basically the best damage on which I can wake them up. Oh, gosh, I had one energy left over. Oh. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, that one's on me. I just played three cards and I forgot that one of them cost less. Uh -huh. And... That's not bad for a boss fight. Boss. Elite, rather. Matroshka, the next two chests you open contain two relics as well as an entropic brew. Here we go. Reflex. Unplayable. If this card is discarded from your hand, draw one card. So at this point, Reflex only replaces itself when we discard it. But if we upgrade it, it's actually a bit of a draw engine. Oh, yes. Dagger spray. My next six cards have a lot of dagger throws, but they also have that all-out attack. So I'm I'm effectively just going to try and weaken them across the board. The all-out attack is already upgraded, so it's 14 damage AoE, so everyone's dead as soon as I draw it. Odd Mushroom. When vulnerable, take 25% more damage rather than 50. And Acrobatics. Draws a ridiculous amount of cards, discards one of them. Hell yes. I think it's entirely possible that I lose this fight. I'm going to rely on the strength of Ghost in the Jar and the random potions we get out of the Entropic Brew, as well as the ability to weaken to carry us through here. Mm-hmm. There we go. Thank you, Tough Bandages, by the way. Acrobatics all the way through until there. Defend, neutralize your attack this turn. Defend again. Hell yeah. No damage taken yet. And we've even neutralized a lot of the damage that was coming in this turn. Still not enough of it. So we'll ghost in the jar here. That's a particularly aggressive hand. We'll now use our Fear Potion. And then that one as well, just to increase our cycle through. Get Weakness on for two turns. I'm actually also going to generate the attack from the Attack Potion here. Whee! Ah, uh, yikes. And then all that attack is fine as well, because it defends for three. Got to remind myself of that. 
I'm just trying to do as much damage as I possibly can while this enemy is also vulnerable. Okay. Yep, it looks like overall the potions were enough to carry us through. And the extra turn of weakness that we bought ourselves was also pretty handy. He's transforming. Literally just need to defend myself and then attack next turn. Got him. Whew. Doppelganger, Phantasmal Killer, Bullet Time. By necessity, this deck is going to have a lot of draw. But a lot of that draw is going to cost me energy to play first then I play bullet time I don't know about that I feel like that's just gonna limit me to a hand that doesn't actually do anything phantasmal killer I mean the deck does have a lot of attacks in it so if I can find the time to play a phantasmal killer we're in a really good position How does a discard deck do damage? Right? How does it deal the damage? Because at the moment, it's just the dagger throws. I'm wondering if PK is actually, like, the go-to here. Hmm. Okay. All right, PK. I'll give you a chance. Hey, hey! Ring of the Serpent replaces Ring of the Snake at the start of your turn. Draw one additional card. Hell to the air. More than happy to see it. Alright, how many elites? How many elites? Two on the left hand side. Never minded. Parity on the other left hand side. Okay, cool. Actually, all sides are equivalent. So I can try and make my rounding decisions based on everything else. Especially because I have the Juzu bracelet, my decision should basically be made on how many question marks can I possibly hit. This is four question marks in the early and then one in the late. We really need a tactician in this deck. It'll just give us so much more power very, very quickly. Especially because we didn't end up getting a boss relic that actually gave us energy. And we're going to need that energy from somewhere. Going to take the upgraded dagger throw here because I'm an optimist, apparently. I know, I'm surprised by that as well. I'll remove a standard strike. Okay, so the ritual dagger is now 12. If this kills an enemy permanently, increase its damage by 3. I'll take one of those as well. Oh, I mean, we are on basically half max HP. And you can discard apparitions to prevent them from exhausting. Because they're ethereal, so if they were in your hand at the very end of the turn, they would exhaust themselves. Oh, that's actually super interesting. Alright, I'm going to take the apparitions. If I wasn't already basically on half HP, I don't think I would have done that. But I was, so I did. See how it allowed me to fully defend myself for that turn without really doing anything? Phantasmal Killer is going to do nothing because the PK is going to be nullified by the fact that this Slaver is about to entangle me and I'm not going to be able to deal damage next turn. That's going to be really frustrating. Both of my strong AoE cards were in the only hand that I couldn't attack in. Yep, that's some uh, that's some Prime Rhapsody luck right there. I had a couple episodes ago, someone <laughs> complained directly to me on Twitter about what ridiculous luck I have, and someone else do it on Discord. 
not a sincere complaint, like a loving complaint. Uh, like a friendly, jostling kind of complaint. But the thing is, in the episode before that, there was an occurrence in this exact fight where I drew the only five cards in my 12 card remaining draw pile that were all unplayable. Two of them wounds, three of them attacks on a turn where I was entangled. Uh, which we ended up figuring out in the Discord was 12 choose 5 combinatorics. It, it was effectively, uh, th there's 792 different combinations of that, and literally only that one combination would result in me having all unplayable cards. So it was a 1 in 792. So, yeah, I get lucky sometimes, but... I <laughs> should That obviously should have been reflex there. I just wasn't thinking about it yet. I obviously get lucky sometimes, but not all the time. My goal ultimately here is to try and finish this off with a ritual dagger. That's also our last apparition. Ooh, sure. Okay, we can do that to safely set up the route. Oh no, because PK actually affects everything that turn. Oh my god! Tingsha, whenever you discard a card during your turn, deal three damage to a random enemy for each card discarded. Yeah? Whoa, poison stab? Deal one damage, apply four poison? Uh, I think the quote-unquote buff of poison stab didn't work, Mega Crit. <laughs> <laughs> and I already thought this card was bad. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, let's upgrade Reflex here. Oh no, I actually need a win con. All right, we'll upgrade Phantasmal Killer so that we can actually try and fit it in edgewise to play it. Uh, Phantasmal Apparition Defend. Whew. All right. It was damage o'clock. I'm not even going to worry about the apparitions. We've got this here. Hell yeah. Steroid potion as well as predator infinite blades out maneuver. No. Just no. Kunai, every time you play three attacks in a single turn, gain a dex, as well as a pantograph at the start of boss combat, heal for 25 HP. It's Matroshka, in case you were wondering why we got the extra relic there. I need to find a way there where I took no damage because I don't want the wounds in my deck if I can avoid it. Perfect. And we managed to get those two neutralizers back in our deck, which means they haven't exhausted, which means I can just get back to them. Actually going to do the draw here. I really don't want a dead turn. Hey. Our next hand's super aggressive. It's fine. I basically needed decided uh, needed to decide whether or not I could afford to do the damage that turn, or if I had to play the apparition. The specimen, whenever an enemy dies, transfer any poison it has to a random enemy. And a bunch of nothing. Okay. And again. Whew. Unfortunately, we just went past PK and did not play it. Which is super sad. But it happens, y'all. Okay. 
I'm more interested in not taking damage and increasing my dex than holding on to the ritual dagger there for a possible good effect. Okay, and got him. See, Cloak and Dagger is a card that I really still can't turn down. Cloak and Dagger gives me defense, which is going to be good because Kunai will increase the amount of defense it gives me. But it also activates Kunai by giving me the cheap attacks and it comes pre-upgraded. Cloak and Dagger is so damn good. I was going to manually discard the apparition there if it didn't happen by itself. Yeah, not a huge fan of that turn. We had a lot of threes in our hand. Game, please. Okay, yes, this... Yep, I accept your apology, video game. That'll do. Expertise, yeah. Upgraded versions, law. I think... We do have a lot of discard in the deck right now. I don't think we need to take our next draw in the next acrobatics, especially before we've upgraded the first one. I don't think we need expertise either. I think the thing that we need the most is, or rather the things we need the most are things that we can discard and be happy about discarding. I think I will take Rive here. All the possibility of it, because even if we do get it, we'll get six max HP. And the bronze scales is actually quite nice. Take the one of 20 cards. There's a tactician. Exactly what I'm looking for. Anything else I desperately want? Blade dance a little bit, but that's about it. I'll take the tactician. Tactician? More like take tician because I'm definitely going to take it. What? Mm -hmm. Don't unsubscribe. Oh, I can see you hovering over the unsubscribe already. That was really quick. Boy, howdy. Okay. Neutralize him. All right. Definitely need to get the PK out this turn. I don't think I'm overestimating it when I say PK is kind of our deck's only win condition at this point. Apparition played this turn will do nothing for us. We'll just strike again. Yeah, I do want to get the enemy below half HP as soon as I possibly can because we've still got apparitions in our deck. And if I can have one on the turn where the enemy executes, I am going to be very pleased about that. So the enemy is going to transform this turn. That's my final apparition. So I need a way to discard it from my hand. And we do have one, thankfully. But now we need a way to get back to it. Yeah, this was always going to be the problem. <laughs> we lined up execute on the wrong turn. This turn effectively has to be as defensive as humanly possible because otherwise we're losing all of our HP rather than just most of it. Yeah, let's keep as much of our HP as is humanly possible here, bud.
Not a huge fan of passing PK again. And there's our next execute. At the very least, this time we do have Apparition. Unfortunately, we did not attack three times. I'm actually not going to play Dagger Spray this turn. I'll defend and then PK. I'm just setting up for a later turn. This would only be 16 damage versus the 18 damage, but it does get me an extra dex point, which is nice. There's another execute. This is the kind of thing I was worried about. I think Strength Potion pop and we've got the kill, right? So 9 plus 14 is 23 plus 17 is 40 plus all that attack. Yeah, we've got the kill. Wait, have I got it without? 13 plus 12 is 25 plus 14 is 39. Yeah, I don't without. Oh, right. I forgot to count for the Tingsha discard damage. I think it would have just been enough, actually. Okay, after image versus glass knife versus unload. Unload is a way to discard all non-attack cards. Usually, I wouldn't take that because I'm like, oh, but what about the attack card? What about the other cards that I still do want in my hand, right? But with tough bandages and Tingsha, my goal is discard as many cards as is humanly possible. Regardless, I definitely have to take the Cursed Key here. We have so much draw in this deck. We will have the energy to fulfill all of our draw. Don't worry. There is a four elite path that has a lot of question marks on it. You know I got to do it. You know I want that bad boy path that we just found. Hell yeah. I shouldn't have played that apparition. I should have discarded it. There's, there was actually no reason to play that apparition at all. Uh-huh. Calculated Gamble would obviously be the most broken pickup that I could make here. I need to make it clear that while I'm aware of that, I can't force the card to show up. Got him. Ancient Potion, as well as just a, just a bunch of stuff. Actually, hang on. Caltrops, if it's Donu and Decker at the end. It's not Donu and Decker at the end. Yeah, I'm not going to be taking Caltrops. Purple Fire Spirits. Okay, well. I could get rid of Rive. I could increase my max HP by 10 by getting rid of a rare card, like Phantasmal or Unload. No, I'll get rid of Rive. It's fine. We also get the spirit poop. It's unpleasant. The only thing it does is negative one to your score mod at the end of the game. How many colorless cards discard other cards? I think it's zero. There, there's not discard. There's put on top of your deck from tactician. Not tactician. Uh, planned maneuver or whatever. Ten max HP is a lot. I'm actually just going to take the one. 10 max HP is not a lot for most decks, but for our deck, it's 25% of our HP pool. Chrysalis, Swift Strike, and Trip. I think I'll take the Trip here. It's one of the only ways we're going to get vulnerability application in this deck, and it's zero cost, which doesn't step on the toes of, you know, the fact that we don't have <clears throat> otherwise that much in the way of ability to defend ourselves. Sorry, ability to play cards is what I meant.
it's super unlikely we get back around to the crystal, uh, the ritual dagger there, especially after this upcoming PK turn. Another cloak and dagger. Just, it's the same as before. It's just a value pick. Two madnesses are arrived. I think I can take the madnesses. Even if they don't come pre-upgraded into our deck. Because if they lower the cost of a draw card, they're actually really good. You can actually look. I'm, I'm making a relatively thick deck here, y'all. This ain't exactly my jam or style. But I'll be damned if I'm not styling. <laughs> hey, I can tell you at least one person enjoyed it. And sure, it was me. It usually is. Gosh, I need a lot more discard synergy. Who? Just a lot of it. All right. Well, there's our Phantasmal. I will actually leave the Ritual Dagger here if I can get it on a Phantasmal Killer turn. Like, it could turn up this turn. I would be really pleased. Aw, oh, it didn't turn up this turn. Now I'm not really pleased. Oh, it turned up this turn. Guess what I am right now. I can actually drop the Neutralize, but Neutralize is going to be effective next turn. Yeah, it's going to be effective for next turn because I'm not going to have a... Or rather, I'm not at least guaranteed to have a brain that works, apparently. I wasn't guaranteed to have a apparition that turn. Mm hmm Gotten back to one, though. Hell yeah! This boss fight is going excellently. We have drawn super well. Okay. <laughs> I can't get rid of it. Even when I'm running a thick deck, it's like, yo, but what if you didn't? I respect you, Sing Bowl. I respect you so much that I'm going to turn down it. I'm kidding, of course. I'm taking the tactician. I still love you, Singing Bowl, though. I need you to know that. From now until the day we both die. Neutralize, another purity, nine dunk. Ah, uh, burst would be good. Would have loved to take that. Unfortunately, found it way too late in the pairings. Whew. Hot and dangerous. If you're one of us, then roll with us, because we make the hipsters fall in love when we got a hot pants on and up. We're going to play Defender for Phantasmal Killer. Phantasmal Killer here, definitely. <sighs> Unfortunate not to have the apparition in the previous hand, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. Even more unfortunate is having literally one attack in the hands where I had all my damage. And then here's all of my, it's, here's all of my attacks and I don't have the PK activated anymore. Frankly, that's so terrifyingly sad. All right. They're adding a lot of burns to my deck. Uh, just, uh, just noticing that. Just a thing I've happened to notice. Basically just needed to figure out how many turns to buy myself there. Bye. Alright, make a round glass at the start of your turn. Deal three damage to all enemies. Upgraded reflex. Yes. 
Uh, will I take a curse? Six max HP is actually pretty big. Yep. It's also for two relics. Matroshka gives us the Art of War. If you don't play any attacks during your turn, gain an extra energy next turn, as well as the Paper Crane. Enemies with weak deal 50% less damage rather than 25% less damage. Unfortunately, we also got the worst curse we could have gotten in Pain. Which is every single time you play a card, this hand, discard one. Upgrade all cards, but you can no longer heal would be fine. Oh no, it's Parasite. It's not Pain. Ooh, I was about to say it would be fine if we didn't have Parasite, but we don't have Parasite. Upgrading all of these cards would make this deck run so much more smoothly. I'm doing it. The correct idea now would be to avoid the elites, but no. Why would... No! Are you kidding me? Why would I avoid them? That's nuts. Okay. Whew. Two decks up. And it's time to start the dagger throws. Hell yeah, full defense right there. And we've got vulnerability on you for this turn. Not a great draw there, though. Yikes. Got PK active for exactly the wrong turn. Well, at least we had Apparition, right? Mm -hmm. Could have been worse. Still got two Apparitions in the deck as well. Again, this is a lot of damage on the wrong turn. I'll leave that apparition in the deck because it doesn't do anything this turn. Uh huh. Well, I mean, that kills, right? Just by discarding so many cards. So we took some damage that turn. Hell yeah, upon pick up, raising max HP by 10. Will this also raise my current HP despite the fact that I can no longer heal? No, it doesn't raise my current HP anymore. That's super interesting. Tools the trade at the start of your turn. Discard a card and draw a card. Hell yes. I'm more than happy to play Apparition first here so that I can play the Dagger Spray without losing that much HP. Nah. Having to pass PK there is kind of annoying. I want to drop Reflex, but I should just drop Tactician. And then I can play out basically my entire hand. Alright, I basically just guaranteed that Spiker dies against my Thorns. Discard Tactician, naturally. And die against the thorns again. Strength potion, gain two strength. Nice, very nice. Piercing whale again, time lord. Mm. Oh, we took the max HP, but we don't get the current HP. I really shouldn't be looking for max HP, obviously. I mean, if I don't draw cards, the extra energy does nothing for me. That's really unfortunate. We have so many discards in our deck, and to have all of our discard synergy without our discards early is, uh... Well, if there was only another word for it other than unfortunate. Unfortunately, there is not. And I find that to be... Mm. 
Not good. Damn. Another nine damage taken. This final fight might kill me, but I'm kind of happy to have done a build a little bit differently than I would usually do. I don't often incorporate discard synergy and I definitely don't take Mark of the Blossom enough. Especially considering its name is actually Mark of the Bloom. The Boot. Whenever you deal four or less unblocked attack damage, increase it to five as well as another deck of spray as well as the well-laid plans. No, thank you. Again, I would rest there. But I'm afraid that's not really a thing. Oh my god, all of the discard synergy in the wrong hand. Oh, Disgusting. I'll play the Apparition before I Madness. Oh my god, an upgraded acrobatics. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to leave both of those apparitions in the deck. Because there's a reasonable likelihood that the enemy gets to a turn where they don't attack here. I'm going to... Yeah, drop those happily. Basically, a lot of these early turns are about trying to build up my decks. I hate it. Fine. <laughs> All right, the enemy is going to purge this turn, but that was costly. Played three cards there to upgrade our decks. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, I left those two apparitions in the deck and I've got a turn of weakness now, so this is going to be fun. I just need to play my most damaging cards this turn. Because I only had one turn of PK there. Okay, so that's 16 incoming, 32 incoming, because we don't have weakness. Yeah, we're dead. Damn it. Ah, okay. What would have helped? Especially after we got the paper crane. I don't think we got any options after the paper crane to get some extra weakness in the deck. That would have helped had we had it. Uh, obviously different draws and different attack patterns by the enemy. The enemy very, very rarely, for instance, tried to make me vulnerable or weaken me and instead attacked almost every single turn. That would have been helpful. Obviously, if I hadn't taken Mark of the Bloom, I would have won, <laughs> which would have also been helpful. The fact that we got both tough managers and Ting Shou was insane. Calculated Gamble would have been really, really, really powerful. Uh... Yeah, Calculated Gamble would have allowed me to turn Discard into our win condition, whereas Discard was, like, just value supply for me, and then Phantasmal effectively became my win condition. The fact that the final boss was Time Lord was probably the worst boss it could have been, frankly. If it was Unawakened One, we would have been totally fine. If it was Dono and Decker, it would have been a little bit more marginal. But the fact that we would have been able to confidently play out both of our Cloak and Daggers constantly, whereas we got tripped up on Cloak and Dagger turns way too often there. Well, damn, damn, damn. For the moment, 
My name has been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slay the Spire. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. That has been a look into the new uncommon tactician. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves and hopefully we'll see you next time.